Hi guys. Guys, if you can hear me, type hello in the comment section. Give me a hello in the comment section if you can hear me and you can see me. Guys, if you can hear me, say hello, say hi. I'm excited to run another calculation session with you. So type hello in the comment section if you can hear me so that we can get started. Also, I need you to share this link. Guys, if you're watching, please share this link with friends. Share this link with anyone who's seeing this exam in November to help them revise. Share this link to as many places as possible. Invite as many people as possible so that we can get this party started. Guys, share this link. Share the love, guys. Share the love. Share, share, share the love to as many people as possible. All right, let's say hello to people in the comment section. Who have I got tonight? Let's see. Uh, I've got Joe. Hello, Joe. Joe's in the building, guys. Hello, Joe. Hello, Bobby. Elvina. Elvina, how are you? I've got Hassan, Deja, Yvonne, Yvonne Grant. Hello, Yvonne. I've got Nana. I think that's Esther. Hello, Esther. Sarah, Linda, Nadam Osman. Hi, guys. Welcome to um, another calculation session. If you're watching us right now and you haven't said hello, please type hello. It just lets me know that you can hear me and that you can see me. Uh, without wasting any more time, we're going to go straight into it. So today's session, we're covering the answers to the calculations that I sent out um, last, well, actually earlier this week. Um, so if you have your answers, I need you to get your answers out. And if you've got any questions you've put down of anyone you found difficult, this is your chance to ask me. If you have any questions, any concern, this is your chance to ask me. And this is also our last free session before our course, our intensive calculation course starts on Sunday. I'm excited. New questions. We have loads of new questions, new skills, new techniques to teach. So I'm excited for the beginning of our intensive program. But tonight is a free session to help other people who are revising, including people who are already registered on the course. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and get started. Okay, so this question is a health economic question. Health economic question, straightforward in my view. So what I want you to do, I want you to write down the answer that you arrived at for this question. I'm sure you saw this question when you did the um, the homework and you have arrived at, at your answer. 
I want you to write down the answer that you arrived at in the comment section. And I'm going to go over the whole thing properly for anyone who may be struggling with this question. So if you have an answer for us, please write your answer down for question 11. Give us your answer in the comment section for question 11. Okay, let's see. So every single person who's put the answer down in the comment section has gone for 37.75. 37.75 is the correct answer, ladies and gentlemen. I'm happy that you arrived at that answer. What's actually important is the fact that they said that they want you to supply the medication in a... They want you to supply the medication in its original container. That is a point that you can't miss. That is very important. Supply the medication in its original container, which means you have to supply five bottles. You have to supply five bottles. When you do the math, when you do the calculation, you should arrive at five bottles. Five times 755 should give you 37.75. So 37.75 is the correct answer to this question. Did anybody struggle? Did anyone struggle with this question? If you struggled, please write struggled in the comment section. Type struggled in the comment section if you are somebody who struggled with this question. Type struggled in the comment section if you struggled. But it seems to me like the vast majority of people were able to get this question right. Okay, how about this one? Question two is on serial dilution. Question 12, sorry, is on serial dilution. Question 12 is on serial dilution. And I, I want you to calculate the concentration of the final solution. So remember that with serial dilution, you have a stock solution, you make an intermediate, and then from the intermediate, they can ask you to dilute it one or two more times. So I want you to calculate the concentration of the final solution and leave your answer in percentage weight per volume. So calculate and write down, or if you've got your answer already from the homework, please write down what answer you arrived at. And again, if you're someone who struggled, feel free to write that you struggled so that I can explain in such a way that hopefully you understand it going forward. Yeah, if you struggled, please write that you struggled. It's very important for you to understand and be strong in your calculations. Very, very important because that's the first paper you're going to sit when you sit the exam. So by doing well in calculations, you're going to carry on with that same momentum throughout the entire paper. So if you struggle, there's no need to try and hide or pretend. Please write struggled and I'll help you understand this. Obviously... <clears throat> Right, okay, so I've got a question from Esther. I think Esther is referring to the last question. Let's go back to the last question. And I'm just going to quickly talk you through this and go back to the um, to question 12. Right, okay, so with, with this question, question 11, 
you, I'm guessing you was able to find out how many milligrams of the drug the patient needs, right? So she takes two capsules of carbocysteine 375. She takes two of those three times a day. So I pretty much did three times, 375 times two, that gave me 750, 750 times three, gave me 2,250 milligrams, which is basically 45 mils, right? In terms of solution, that is 45 mils. So how much solution would she need for 28 days? I did 48 times 28, and that gave me 1,260 mil. But because, because the question specifically says, make sure, and this ha happened in a previous exam, so it says, make sure that you supply an original container. You have to supply a full container. So you've got four containers already, and you have 0.2 of another container and you go pay for that container for them to be able to get that 0 0.2 of the bottle that makes sense so if i said to you give somebody uh 60 mil out of 100 mil of an antibiotic you still have to pay for the whole bottle for the person to get the 60 mil you just can't pay the supplier for 60 mil and expect you know that like it just doesn't work like that. you have to pay for the whole bottle and the patient then use it the 60 mil, obviously discuss the rest. So because the question says for you to calculate for a whole bottle, that 4.2 becomes five bottles. So I think that's what you're asking. So I hope that makes it clear. 4.2 becomes five bottles because the question specifically wants you to calculate in whole bottles. They have to pay for the whole bottle for the patient to be able to get a fraction they need. All right, so that's that one. That's not too bad. This one here, a lot of people tend to struggle with. So what I've done in this new calculations workbook I'm going to give you when we start on Sunday, I'm go there's um, a section that covers dilutions, simple dilutions, mixed dilutions, and obviously serial dilutions like this one, which is um, where a lot of people tend to struggle with. In your GPSC exam, um, there's good news and bad news with dilution. The good news is you're only going to see about three dilution questions maybe four maximum and the bad news is you're going to see some dilution questions so you need to get on with you know learning how to do them ask the questions practice 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 because every single mark is important okay so this one is um serial dilution like i said and what you have to understand is something called dilution factor you need to learn how to work out a dilution factor from a question. If you can understand how to work out a dilution factor, it becomes very easy. It becomes extremely easy. So you have a stock, 500 mil of chlorhexidine, 5%. You're instructed to uh, make a one in five dilution in order to prepare an intermediate solution. So let me ask you, let me talk you through it. All right, so I'm not going to go straight to the answer. Let me talk you through it. So hopefully that way you'll be uh, better enlightened. All right, so um, so 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 let's let's look at the first this question here. So one in five dilution. What is the dilution factor? One in five dilution. What do you think the dilution factor is? One in five dilution. What is the dilution factor? Tell us if you're someone who struggled, you should get involved. Tell us if someone says you've made a one in five dilution, what is that? Five, thank you. The dilution factor is five. If I've made a one in five dilution, it means I've taken, I've diluted my solution five times. <clears throat> That's what it means. So I've, I've got one part of it and I've added four parts of water to make it five. So you have one in five dilution. So it's going to be a lot less concentrated than where I started off because I've made five times, I've diluted it five times, basically. So yes, the dilution factor is five. So without going straight to the next one, what do you think the concentration of the intermediate solution will be? So I have three solutions. I have three solutions. I'm just going to use these props to demonstrate what I'm saying. So I have three solutions. I have um, a bottle here. For people who don't understand, I'm going to try and use these props to demonstrate what I'm talking about. So I've got a bottle here. 
right? I've got this bottle here, and this is my stock solution. From my stock solution, I'm going to dilute or should I make my next solution, which is my intermediate. So I've got stock, I have intermediate, and I have a third one here, which is my final solution. So if I say to you that I've done a one in five dilution to get my intermediate, what's the concentration of my intermediate? This is 5%. My stock is 5%. And I've done a one in five dilution to get my intermediate, this small bottle in my hand. What do you think the concentration of this small bottle is going to be now that I've done a one in five dilution? Can anyone tell us how you're going to find the concentration of my intermediate? I have stock, I have intermediate, and I have final. Intermediate means the one in the middle. So I've got one in the middle here. How am I going to find the concentration of this intermediate? Given that my stock is 5% and my, and my dilution factor is 5. What are you going to do? Tell us if you know what the answer is in the comment section. Tell us. Good. So you divide by five. You don't times by five. You divide by five because I'm diluting. When you're diluting, you divide by five. If you have stock solution and you have intermediate, and I'm going from some that's stronger to some that's not as strong i have to divide right so when you have five percent divided by the dilution factor and it gives you one percent so my intermediate is one percent which is less than the stock because i've diluted it does that make sense if you add more and more water to something the taste won't be as strong as it was initially that's what's happening if i had if i had a um a container like this full of water and i add say one spoon of salt into it right and then i dilute that water it won't be as strong as it was initially so it's going to be less so this is five percent and this has to be one percent because we divide five percent by the dilution factor which is five so this is one percent my intermediate is one percent okay so from here they made another dilution again it take five mil of this one and they dilute it to a hundred so what is the next dilution factor or the final one from 5 mil to 100 mil, can anyone tell us what is the dilution factor from 5 mil to 100 mil? Tell us. I know that my current concentration is 1%. This is 1%. I decide to take 5 mil of it and I dilute it to 20 mil. What is the dilution factor from 5 mil to, to 100 mil? Sorry. From 5 mil to 100 mil. Can anyone tell us? 20. Thank you. 20 because 100 divided by 5 is 20. Yes, 20 is the dilution factor this time. So that 1% that I have in this container, I'm going to divide it by the dilution factor to get the next one. All right. Are you following what I'm doing? I've got 1% in this container. I'm going to divide it by this dilution factor 20 to get the next one. All right. So it's a sequential process. You have stock, you divide by the dilution factor you have intermediate you have your intermediate you divide by the dilution factor you get your final all right i can divide my final to get the next one and carry on going as many times as they want me to most times in the exam they only have a three-step question okay so we divided this one by five and we got one percent and this one percent divided by 20 the dilution factor divided by 20 to get your final solution so what would your final solution be if you divide one percent by 20 what would it be if you divide one percent by 20 tell us the people who said they struggled get involved right if you divide one percent by 20 what would your final solution be get involved and tell us Fantastic. Yes, I can see some people writing down their answers. 0 .0, 0 0.05 is the correct answer. Okay, so some people get dilution, some people don't. But I promise you, because I was one of the people who just didn't understand dilutions. It always went over my head. It just went whoosh constantly over my head. So if you take the time out to like learn how to do it, watch this video, like I said, watch it over and over. 
practice, 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 it will definitely come because that's what happened to me. And I understand it perfectly now. It's not difficult at all. I do most of them in like less than one minute. Yeah, so please practice, come back to this video, watch it again. Look at what I did with my props and just know that is a process. And if they want you to do it four or five times, you just have to keep doing the same thing. Divide by the dilution factor, you go to the next one. Divide by the dilution factor, go to the next one. Once you learn how to find out what the dilution factor is, then you don't have anything to worry about, honestly. So 0.05% is the concentration in percentage weight per volume. How about this then? Well, if I ask you to leave that concentration in PPM, because sometimes they can ask you about PPM in the exam. PPM, what does PPM stand for? Tell us what your answer would be in PPM. That's 0.05. Tell us what it would be in PPM. If I ask you to leave your final answer in PPM, what answer would you put down in PPM? What would your answer be? If I said, leave your concentration in PPM, how would you go from this number to PPM? What does PPM mean? PPM means parts per million. PPM means parts per million. Sometimes in the GPAC exam, they can ask you to express concentration in parts per million. So what would you do? PPM is parts per million. Correct. Yes. So Muhammad, Muhammad says grams in a million mil. Fantastic. PPM means grams in a million mil. So for this one, I think the people who have put down 500, which is correct, by the way, the correct answer is 500. So what you do is say if there's 0 0.05 in a hundred mil, there's X in a million mil, right? 0 0.05 in a hundred mil because 0 0.05 percent means 0 0.05 grams in a hundred x in a million. If you cross multiply, you find x, and x is 500 ppm. X is 500 ppm. So if they ask you in the exam, leave your answer as ppm, simply follow that step and you get your answer because ppm means parts per million. Fantastic. Well done, guys. So let's move on. To the next question, question 13. This one is about RDA, recommended dosage allowance or the recommended daily allowance. So this patient is having sodium citrate oral sachets and they need, or you, shall I say, need to work out the percentage of the patient's recommended daily salt allowance. So what answer do people put down for this question? Question 13. Tell us what answer you put down for question 13. Okay, let's see. Let's see what people did for this one. The correct answer to this question is 7.7%. The correct answer is 7.7%. Let's see. Yes, in the comment section, 
Linda went for 7.7, .7, Bobby 7.7, .7, Sarah 7.7, .7, Elvina 7.7. .7. Almost everybody went for 7.7. .7. This is fantastic. Yes. So 7.7 .7 is the correct answer. Once again, if you're someone who struggled, let me know so I can break it down. Let me know so I can break it down for you. This is a very important question for the GPSE exam. It's come up a few times now. It's come up a few times. Up to two, three exams back to back is come up. So everyone going into the exam in November needs to understand how to do this sort of question. Very important. So for people who didn't understand, I'm going to try and explain uh, to help you hopefully understand it. This patient takes four sashes per day according to the question. And each sachet contains about two millimole of sodium. Watch, it said sodium. It didn't say salt. It just says they contain two millimole of sodium. Because it takes four sachets a day, I'm going to times two millimole by four. And that will give us eight millimole. Two millimole times four will give me eight millimole. You remember the basic formula. Mole is equal to mass divided by MR. You learn this from university or even secondary school. Mole is equal to mass divided by MR, but millimole, millimole is equal to mass in milligrams divided by MR in millimole slash milligrams. Does that make sense? So when you see millimole, your mass needs to be in milligrams, basically. All right. So what I did here was I said mole is equal to mass divided by MR. Obviously, millimole is equal to mass in milligrams divided by millimole slash milligrams, and then work out what the mass would be. So what mass of sodium is the patient getting? That's what I did in my first step. So the mass that the patient is getting is 0 0.18 grams, just by rearranging the equation. Yeah, it's not that hard. Rearrange mole equals mass divided by MR. Rearrange it to find the mass. So you get 0 0.184 grams, and then you equate it. So from the question, it tells you that 2.4 grams of sodium is equal to 6 grams of salt. If that's the case, then your answer, which is 0 0.184 grams, is equal to what? You find out <clears throat> the equivalence of salt that that sodium would have come from. And then you work out the percentage. So 0 0.46 grams is the amount of salt that that sodium would have come from. Divide it by the total allowance of salt per day, which is six grams for an adult, six grams for an adult and times it by 100 to get the percentage. All right, so step by step, questions in the GPAC exam nowadays, they require multiple step. A lot of them are not going to be like a one step question. There's going to be two, three, sometimes even four steps. Okay, so follow the steps from your mole equals mass divided by MR formula. You work out your mass you equate your mass of sodium to the amount of salt it would have come from and then work out the percentage by dividing it by the daily um, recommended amount of salt. So for an adult, the daily recommended amount of salt is 6 grams. So the patient is getting about 0 0.46, which is 7.7% of their recommended daily allowance of salt. Be careful though. The last thing I'll say about this question, be careful. Sometimes they will ask you, see how the question ask, is asking you what percentage of um, recommended daily salt allowance. Sometimes it will say what percentage of recommended sodium allowance. Sodium comes from the salt because salt is sodium chloride. Okay, so just be careful because sometimes they change the wording and it would say what is the recommended sodium allowance. You can see the recommended sodium allowance per day for an adult is 2.4 grams so you have to do your zero point do your zero point one eight uh, four divided by 2.4 grams to find the percentage if they asked you about sodium but because they asked you about salt that's why we had to find the um the corresponding amount of salt that the sodium would have come from okay so i hope that is clear to everybody i'm going to move on to question 14 Question 14 is on creatinine clearance. The thing about creatinine clearance is the formula itself is always given to you in every exam. Ever since the GPSC took over in 2000 and when they took over, 2011, when they took over, this question has always been in every exam. 
creatinine clearance and the formula is always given to you. I don't think I've ever seen a pharmacist or a student who sat the exam and didn't get the creatinine clearance formula given to them as part of the exam question. So back in the day, they would ask you to calculate creatinine clearance and that's it. But nowadays, they don't expect to stop at calculating creatinine clearance. They will ask you to calculate creatinine clearance, then use that to find other things in an SPC or BNF extract or anything else that they want you to find your information from. So let's go straight to the answer. What answer did you get for question 14? What answer did you get for question 14? Assuming she's taking the recommended maximum daily dose of cephalexin that she's allowed, how much cephalexin will she receive per kg of her body weight? Give your answer to the nearest 0.1 milligram slash kg. So what answer did you put down? What answer did you put down for this question? Okay, let's see. Um, I've seen answers, answers from Bobby, answer from Linda, answer from Mohammed Elvina, answers from Esther. Uh, and I've seen a couple of people, Baby Ryan. Wow, nice name, Baby Ryan. Baby Ryan says that he's struggling. And I've also got Sarah as well. So if you're struggling, guys, please write struggling. Don't be shy. The exam the exam in november the exam in november you're going to attempt it on your own so you need to fortify yourself as much as possible get yourself ready develop the skills ask all the questions now before the exam so if you're someone who's watching us right now and you're struggling please write struggling in this in the um, comment section so that i can explain in a lot of detail a lot of people have put down their answers let's see if they are right uh 22.4 yes fantastic well done well done, guys. Well done to everybody who put down 22.4. This is a typical exam question. Multiple step, yes? So you calculated creatinine clearance. That's your first step. You get that answer. You go to the BNF extract. You look under renal impairment to find out the maximum dose that the patient can, can have. You then divide that dose by the patient's weight. Divide that dose because the patient is 67 kg, isn't it? Divide that dose by the patient's weight, you get an answer, and then you round it up to the nearest 0.1 milligram. So that's four things you have to do. Four things you have to do in total. So, so that's um, very similar to what you would see in an actual exam. So well done to everyone who got the correct answer. As you can see, my working is on the screen right now, and I've basically gone through the steps I've talked about. Creatinine clearance, BNF extract, uh, the maximum daily dose, which is 1,500 for anybody whose creatinine clearance is between 10 to 48 mil per minute. And then I divided it by 67, which is the patient's weight to get 22.38. And then 22.38 to the nearest 0 0.1 milligrams is 22.4. That is the complete answer. That is the complete answer. So baby Ryan says, I wasn't sure 
I need to divide at the end. There you go. Very good question. That's where some people struggled in the previous exam. They wasn't sure where to divide. It was divided because the question says, the question says, how much is this patient getting per one kg of their body weight? So let's just assume that I weigh 80 kg, for example, and I'm taking 1,000 milligrams of a drug, right? If I'm taking 1,000 milligrams of a drug and I weigh 80 kg, how much do you think I'm getting per one kg of my body weight? I'm talking to Thija and baby Ryan. Use me as an example. So imagine I'm taking a drug and I'm taking 1,000 milligrams of the drug and my body weight is 80 kg. How much do you think I'm getting per one kg of my body weight? How much do I receive per one kilogram of my body weight? How much do you think? Imagine I'm taking 1,000 milligrams and I weigh 80 kg. How much do you think I'm going to get per one kg of my body weight? So this question is for baby Ryan and Fija. Fija and baby Ryan, see if you can work out what the answer is. Imagine that I weigh 80 kg and Imagine I weigh 80 kg and I'm taking a thousand milligrams of a drug. Any drug could be say paracetamol, for example. How much do you think I'm going to get per one kg of my body weight? You're going to see a lot of questions like this in an actual exam. So it's very important for you to understand it. Yeah. So how much do you think I'm going to get per one? Fantastic. Yes. Mohammed says 12.5 milligram per kg. Good because you divide 1,000 by 80. 80 divided, 1,000 divided by 80 is equal to 12.5 milligrams. There you go. So 1,000 divided by 80 is equal to 12.5 milligrams. So that's all you had to do at the final step. The final step just requires you to divide the dose the patient is taking. See that 1,500 we saw in the question divided by 67, which is the patient's body weight. And I will tell you how much drug they are getting per 1 kg of their body weight. Yeah, it's easy. It's not difficult at all. Let's move to question 15. Question 15 is asking you to calculate the volume of oxycodone that will be administered to this baby in a two-week period. Calculate the volume that will be administered to this baby in a two-week period. So tell us what answer you arrived at for question 15. What answer did you get for question 15? Please write down your answer. Write down your answer for question 15. Let's see. Right. So in the comment section, the answers are split. Right. So some people have gone for 17 and some people have gone for 15. So we have two answers. Some of us have gone for 15 and some of us have gone for 17. So who is correct and why are you correct? This is a trick question, guys. I don't want you to get this wrong in the exam. This is a trick question where you see that a syringe has been used and that syringe has been calibrated or marked. Sometimes they use the word calibrated or sometimes they will say marked. So you remember 
when you look at a syringe, say you buy a bottle of cap or any syringe really, get a syringe out and you see that the syringe has markings on it. And some of them will be at a 0.5 mil interval, which means there will be 0.5, 1 mil, 1.5, 2 mil, 2.5, 3 mil, etc., etc. So the markings will be written on the syringe and some of them will be 0.1 mil, whatever the increments um, is. All right, so it's very important for you not to get it wrong. Now, with this particular question, you need to make sure that when you calculate the dose that you give to the patient, when you calculate the dose you give to the patient, that, that dose is rounded to the nearest 0.1 mil for this particular question because the syringe that you have in your hand has been marked to the nearest 0.1 mil. So I'm going to talk you through this properly, especially because some people got 15 and they've made one little error. The people who got 15 as their answer have made a slight error and that's why your overall answer is wrong. So let's, let's talk through this. The people who put down 15, your answer is wrong, but I'm going to teach you the correct way to do it. So this patient weighs 12 kilograms and they're getting uh, 2 to 5 micrograms per kg. So for the entire 12 kilograms of their body weight, they'll be getting 2,700 micrograms or 2,700 micrograms. I changed 2,700 micrograms to milligrams. I think everybody understands it at this point. Everyone understands it at this point. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is find out what this drug is in meal. From the question, you can work out that zero, sorry, that term 2.7 milligram, what would it be in meal? So when you look at the question, again, I think most people um, are okay up to this point anyway, but I'm going to go over it. So you look at the question again, it says the drug is available as 10 milligrams per meal, right? So if there's 10 milligrams in one meal, then 2.7 milligrams will be in how many meal? So if we change 2.7 milligrams to mil, we end up with 0.27 mil because 10 milligrams is equal to 1, 2.7 is equal to 0.27. But this is where the mistake came from because some people, the people who got 15, then went ahead and used 0.27 to calculate. But remember that the syringe you have in your hand, you have a syringe in your hand and that syringe is marked as 0.1 mil interval. Okay, so you have 0 0.1 mil, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8. So you can't physically measure 0 0.27 because it's not marked like that. You have to give the nearest 0 0.1 mil to the patient. Does that make sense? You can't physically, it doesn't give you the chance to be able to, how are you going to get 0 0.27 when you have 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7? You just can't physically do it. So what you have to do is round it up to the nearest 0 point, sorry, 0 0.1 mil, yes, which is 0 0.3, and then give 0 0.3 because the syringe you have won't let you give 0 0.27. It's not in two decimal places, in one decimal place. Does that make sense? That is a very important information that you need to understand, especially people who got it wrong. All right. So you have 0 0.3 mil, which is what you can get from your syringe because it's not 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5. You have 0 0.3 mil and then you multiply it by, by four times a day by 14 days, which is two weeks. And that will give you 16.8. 16.8 to the nearest whole number is 17 mil. Yeah, is that explanation clear? If you understand it, please type yes. Give me a yes in the comment section. If you understand my explanation, give me a yes. If you want me to go over it one more time, write one more time. If you understood my explanation, if you see where your mistake came from, people who got this question wrong, say you ended up with 15, for example, and you understand it, give me a yes. But if you want me to go over it again, write one more time and i'm going to go over it again give me a yes give me a yes give me a yes if you understand it if you want me, if you want me to go over it again i'll go over it one more time if you understand it give me a yes but it's just one small mistake that you made which is where you had that 0 0.27 you then multiply that by 4 then by 14 no you have to change that 0 0.27 to the nearest 0 0.1 mil 
which is 0 0.3, and then use 0 0.3, okay? So give me a yes, yes from Elvina, yes from Nadam, yes from Joe, yes from Baby Ryan, yes from Esther, yes, yes, yes. Okay, so a couple of people want me to go over it one more time, so I'll do that quickly for you. So the first couple of steps, <clears throat> I believe everyone understood. The dose of the drug is 2 to 5 micrograms per kg. The baby weighs 12 kilograms. So for the entire body weight, we're going to multiply 12 by 225 to give us the entire amount that the patient is supposed to be taking. So that entire amount is 2,700 micrograms. I change 2,700 micrograms to milligrams to make it aligned because in the question, it says that 10 milligrams is equal to one mil. So I'll change my micrograms to milligrams to make my units resemble each other. That 2.7 milligram is equal to 0 0.27. Why? Because 10 milligram is equal to one mil, 2.7 milligram is equal to 0 0.27 mil. But this is where people make the mistake. This is where you need to pay attention. So at this place where you get 0 0.27 mil, look at the question again. How is the syringe calibrated? Some syringes are calibrated at 0 0.5 mil interval or 1 mil interval or 0 0.1 mil or, you know, wherever this, the calibration is, that is what you need to approximate your answer to. At that point, you don't wait till the end. Don't wait till the end. This is an example where you need to approximate your answer because you can't physically give the patient a dose of 0 0.27. It's just not possible given the syringe that they've given you. All right, so you need to approximate it to 0 0.3 mil and then multiply that by four times a day and multiply it by 14 days, which is 16.8, approximately 17. Let's see. Uh, I divided all the micrograms at the end to milligrams, but I was wrong. Yes, yes, yes. So that's a mistake, Stephanie. Correct that. Change the micrograms to milligrams during the calculation to make it easier for yourself to make it a lot easier. Let's see, who else again? A. A says, at the start of the question, I did 225 times 12 times 4. Nope, that's not how to do it. You need to give the patient a dose. You need to give the patient a dose first. When you arrive at the dose you're supposed to give to the patient, that's when you need to do your times 12, times 4, times 12, blah, blah, blah. All right, so yes, that's what I want to see. So Thija says, it's a lot clearer now. Elvina says, the same. Thank you. So I'm going to move on to the next question. Thank you, guys. The next question is six, question 16. This question probably drove some people crazy. This question probably drove some people crazy, but I'm interested to see what your answer is for this question. I'm interested to see what your answer is. Remember that in the exam, there's going to be some SPC questions. Some of the SPC questions you haven't seen before, and some of them you see you've seen before. But what I do in my sessions, I try to give you as many SPC questions. Some of them are completely new to you, some of them you haven't seen, not just SPCs, diagrams, tables, all sorts. I remember in the last question, in the last session um, we did before the June exam, we uh, went over a, um, a table that covers conversion of um, roti is it rotigotin patches. I think it was rotigotin. The patient is a Parkinson's disease, disease patient and they had to go from uh, rotigotin. No, they were taking other medicines for Parkinson's disease and you go, go from there like levodopa, et cetera, et cetera, go from there to rotigotin patches. So we did a question like that and some people have never seen it before, right? So this is another example of a question you probably haven't seen before which i think uh, some people may struggle with so what answer did you put for this one then i'll be very surprised if a lot of people get this right i'll be very 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 surprised because this question you need to think about it properly you need to think about it properly okay so let's look at the answer let's look at the answer to this question the correct answer to this question is two 2.5 mil per minute. 2.5 mil per minute. Why is it 2.5 mil? I know you can't wait to ask. Why is it 2.5 mil per minute? If you read the question, it says that the patient, let's go back for a second. If you read the question, it says that the patient 
is 5 kg and they take 20 milligram per kg. So the first thing you would do is multiply five by 20 and that will give you 100 milligrams. It also tells you in the question that they don't want you to exceed, it says you receive instructions not to exceed one milligram per kg, which is the same as five milligram per, uh, sorry, five milligram per minute, basically, because five times one mg is five mg. So five mg per minute, basically. In minimum volume, this is where I think some people might have made a mistake because you need to look at that SPC link. Look at that SPC link. And when you look at the SPC link, it tells you the strength of the drug at the beginning. And then it takes you to section 6.1. Go to section 6.1 and you see that there are two volumes that you can reconstitute your medication in, phenytoin. You can reconstitute them in two volumes, 50 mil and 100 mil. But the question says reconstitute in the, in the minimum volume, which is 50. It says 50 mil or 100 mil. But this particular question wants you to reconstitute in the minimum volume. The minimum volume is 50 mil. There are two ways you can do this. So that 100 milligram, you can put that in the 50 mil, yeah? Put your 100 milligram in the 50 mil, or you can use the time, which is 50 mil in 20 minutes. But I think this, the solution at the bottom is a lot easier. So if 100 milligram is in 50 mil, that five milligram will be in how many? It will be in 2.5 mil. So 2.5 mil is the answer to this question. You need to go back and do this properly, guys. This is very important. You need to go back and do this. I've written two ways of doing it. Fantastic. A says 2.5. Well done. If you have a solution, A, that's different to mine, please write in the comment section. Write how you got to your answer in the comment section, if you would. Um, but yes, yeah, so I've written two ways for you, two different ways. The first way is to use the time to get to your answer. And I've used another way, which is the drug in volume, 100 milligrams in 50 mil, 5 milligrams in 2.5 mil. And that's the answer. All right. So go back and do this question again. Go back and do this question again. Miss Chinta is asking, please give worthy questions. Yes, Miss Chinta. So remember that last week we did easy questions, in my opinion. Today we're doing moderate questions. When we start the course from Monday, so not Monday, from Sunday, five o'clock on Sunday, we're going to progress a lot more. So you have to understand everyone is at a different pace, everyone is at a different level, but we all have to like climb from the bottom all the way to the top. Trust me, there are some proper challenging questions coming up when our revision starts on Sunday. I can't wait. All right, so um, guys, two ways you can do this question. You can use the time, like I said, or you can use volume at the bottom. Two ways, time or volume at the bottom. All right, so I've written the answer, Linda. If you look, if you look on my slide right now, you will see we have put down five milligram in one minute. A hundred, mill 100 milligrams is the whole thing that the patient needs for their body, right? So that 100 milligrams will potentially take them 20 minutes to use up, but we're not really interested in the whole 100 milligrams, are we? We're just interested in the five milligrams, all right? So you can do it that way, or the one at the bottom is a lot easier. So you see we have put alternative solution. That one is a lot easier because 100 mil is the minimum volume, which is 50 mil from your SPC, five milligram will be in 2.5 mil, okay? As expected, I know a lot of people will struggle with this one, but it's a, um, it's a good example of a question that you should go back and do again. Okay, let's try this question this time. What I'll do, I'm going to... I'm going to um, give you a couple of minutes because I know some people struggle with dilution, but I've gone... Um, an extent by trying to explain dilution. So let's see if people who normally struggle with dilution, they can try and get to the answer. So what I'll do, I'll give you a couple of minutes. I'll give you a couple of minutes and then we'll look at the answers together. So question 17, I'm just going to wait, give everyone a chance to do question 17 again. Even if you've got your answer from before, please do this question again. I need to um, 
feel like a lot of people understand dilution and they're confident with their dilutions. Um, so I'll give you a couple of minutes to try this question again and write your answer down. If you've done it before, do it again just to make sure that your answer is accurate. Okay, guys, if you have an answer, please write down your answer in the comment section for question 17. If you have an answer, write your answer in the comment section, please. Guys, if you have an answer, give us your answer for question 17. I know a lot of people did this before, but I wanted to give you a chance to try again after I went over our explanation of serial or multiple dilution. Some people call it multiple, some people call it serial dilution. It means the same thing, really. Um, write down your answer in the comment section.
Okay, guys, put down your answer in the comment section. If you like the session so far, guys, please give us a like before I forget to ask. Give us a like if you like the session so far. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please smash the subscribe button. Okay, let me go over this question with you. So you have a stock solution that is 2%. 2% is your stock solution. Is then used to prepare an intermediate. Your intermediate is the one in the middle. Right, such that when this solution is diluted one in four, you have a one in 50. So when the intermediate is diluted one in four, you have a one in 50. So we have stock, intermediate, final. All right, so the final solution is one in 50. If the final solution is one in 50, what would the percentage be? Percentage means in a hundred. What would it be? Can anyone tell us? I'm just going to talk you through it. So if the percentage is, um, sorry, if the concentration is one in 50, what would the percentage be for question 17? Correct, yes. So the concentration would be 2% because if there's one in 50, hang on a second, if there's one in 50, then there will be two in 100. If there's one in 50, there will be two in 100, yes. So there's two in a hundred. So your final concentration is 2%. So how do you find out what your concentration of your intermediate is? That's the question I go, I'm asking you. So what do you think you need to do if you know that your final concentration is 2%? What do you need to do to your final concentration to find your intermediate? Yeah. So which one do you think is stronger? That's another way of asking you this question. Which one do you think is stronger, the intermediate or the final? Which one do you think is, goes, is meant to be bigger? Which one is meant to be bigger? This is what I was saying to you earlier. I was saying to you earlier that if you have salt in a little bit of water, right, it's going to taste strong, isn't it? But if you dilute it by adding loads and loads of water, it won't taste as strong. So which one do you think is going to be stronger out of the two? your intermediate or your final? Okay, so what do you do then? So what do you do with the dilution factor? We know our dilution factor is four. So what are you going to do with four? Would you multiply or would you divide to get your intermediate? So again, I get my props out. I have my stock. I'm not really concerned about the stock in this case because they want me to find out about my intermediate and the last one, which is final. So we calculated the concentration of the final as 2% and we have my intermediate here. And how am I going to find the concentration of my intermediate? I'm going to go backwards. How am I going to find the con concentration of this intermediate? What am I going to do? What am I going to do? Multiply, yes. Multiply by four. You go multiply by four because remember the dilution is going this way. It's going this way from the from the big container. You multiply from the big container to this one here, from this one here to this one here. Okay. So when you're moving this way, it changes. The concentration does change. So the final concentration is two percent. But from the intermediate to the final, the concentration has to go from big to small. Does that make sense? It needs to go from big to small. All right, so you multiply because the final can't be stronger than the intermediate. It doesn't make sense. Think about it. How can the final, something you've added loads and loads of water to, be stronger than the intermediate you took it from? It doesn't make any sense. Think about it properly. So you times. All right, this is very important, guys. You times because the intermediate needs to be stronger than the final because you took the final from the intermediate and diluted it. Okay, is that clear to everyone? Obviously, dilution is something you have to go back and do more practice on. Very, very important for you to go back and practice, practice, practice. But 
you need to understand the basics before you go off and do your practice, which is what I'm doing, which is what I'm doing. Okay, this one is easy. This particular one is easy. In this case, yes, Mohammed, thank you. Mohammed, thank you very much. So, yes, when you know. What answer did you get for this, Mohammed? I don't think you put down your answer in the comment section. What answer did you get? So you normally, when you're working out the intermediate solution, you can use the concentration of the final solution and multiply by the dilution factor. Yes, correct. Thank you. 8% is the answer. 8% is the answer, yes. So, um, guys, that is... Yes, it's asking for the... Linda is asking for the constitution of intermediate. Correct. Yeah. So, Linda, if you go back to this question that we did initially, let's go back to this one for a second. I don't need to move on because of time, but look at this question we did. When you have a question like this and you have one in five dilution to prepare an intermediate, you then take five mil of that intermediate and make it up to 20. So, when we calculated the concentration, of the intermediate, we had 1% for this question, isn't it? And then you decided to divide because you're going from intermediate to final. From intermediate to final, you divide. So you divided one by 20 and you ended up with 0 .0, 0 0.05. If I wanted to go back to my concentration of my intermediate, I'll multiply, won't I? So the basic point is you have to multiply your final concentration to go back to your intermediate. That's what, you, that's what you do here. So if I wanted to go back to the 1%, I'll multiply 0 0.05 by 20. And that's how you go back, period. There's no other way of doing it, all right? Because as you divide, it becomes less, all right? So um, that is just the basic thing you need to do. If you're going back to the intermediate, you divide. If you're going forwards, so you multiply if you're going backwards. If you're going forwards, you divide by the dilution factor, which is what we did. Okay, this one is not hard. Let's move on, guys, because of time. Question 18. This one is not difficult at all. I think a lot of people... Question... Yes, yes, yes. The correct answer is 8%, guys. The correct answer is 8%. Question 18, guys, let's move on to question 18. I've got loads and loads of dilution questions like this coming up when we start on Sunday. So let's move on to question 18. Question 18, did everybody get 105? Did everyone get 105? Please say yes in the comment section if you got 105 for question 18. It's a straightforward question, but is a popular GPSC exam question. Yes, 105 for question 18. 105 for question 18. Did everybody get 105 for question 18? If you found it confusing, you can let me know. Otherwise, I'll move on because I think this one's one of the straightforward ones. I don't need to waste a lot of time on this. Uh, 105 for question 18. Yes, fantastic. Okay, 
How about this one then? Question 19 and question 20 are similar questions. Question 19, what answer did you get for question 19? Type your answer for question 19 in the comment section. Type your answer for question 19 in the comment section. Question 19, give us your answer for question 19. Okay, different answers. I'm seeing all sorts of answers for question 19. This is interesting to see. I've got 11, I have 18, I have eight, and I have nine mil. So four answers for one question. Wow. All right. So the correct answer to this question is 11 mil. The correct answer to this question is 11 mil, guys. The correct answer is 11 mil. Why is it 11 mil? If you arrived at 8 mil, the reason you got 8 mil is because when you calculated the MR of calcium chloride, you only added 35.5 to 40, which is a mistake. So remember that calcium chloride has two molecules of chlorine, also two chlorine atoms, basically. So the MR for CaCl2 has to be 40 plus 35.5, plus 35.5 again, all right, which will give you 111. So if you got 8 mil as your answer, that's the mistake that you made. You need to correct that because calcium chloride is 111. It's not 40 plus 35.5. There are two lots of chloride atoms, and you need to account for both of them. You need to account for both of those. So the answer is 11 mil because once you get 111 you'll be able to work out the mass once you get the mass you'll be able to work out the volume so the volume is 11 mil the volume is 11 mil for this one any problems any questions at all any problems at all for questioning for question 19 any issues, let me know. But I think my um, slide is self-explanatory in the sense that you can see where your mistake came from. If anyone made any mistake with this question, I think you can easily look at it and see. Like I said, a lot of people, a lot of people got this wrong because they didn't add the two lots of chloride atoms. That's where some people messed up. But other than that, I think it's quite clear to see what you need to do. Thank you, Mohamed. Thank you very much. Yes, Tija, Tija says, got it. Let's move on to the last one for the night, which is question 20. What answer did you get for question 20? Question 20, what answer did you put down for question 20? Okay, 
The answer to this question is 129.5. 129.5 is the correct answer. And it's a trick question. It's a trick question because the question talks about four millimole of calcium. It says the patient gets four millimole of calcium per kilogram. All right. But you got to understand that that mole or minimal in this case contains the other compound as well. It contains the other compound because remember that one mole has the calcium chloride in it that the patient is going to be given. So they won't be getting just the calcium by itself. They have to get the calcium chloride to be able to get the calcium. Does that make sense? That's where the trick comes from. They have to receive the calcium chloride for them to be able to get the calcium. That is very important. I think that's a trick that some people may have fall for. So you need to use the whole thing because the patient is getting the calcium and the chloride. You can't separate it technically. If you think about it, you can't separate it technically. The patient's getting calcium chloride. So you have to put them into consideration, even though that what we're really interested in is calcium, but they still take calcium chloride. All right. So that is where I think some people may have made a slight error. But other than that, the same formula, again, mole equals mass divided by Emma. Uh, mass is 31.08 grams. And you can basically work out the volume by saying if there's two grams in 100 mil, there is 31.08 in X. X is 1554 divided by 12 hours. It will give you 129.5. So that is where I think that is why I think some people may have made made a um, a mistake. Yeah. So, um, so hopefully you can correct that now. You can correct that now and make adjustments in the future. Make adjustments in the future, but it's quite straightforward if you ask me. All right. So guys. This is the last question for tonight. I'm happy that you joined. Um, calculations is not the easiest for a lot of people in the exam, um, which is why it's important for you not to take it for granted. I certainly take it very seriously. I put a lot of effort into calculations because over the last three years, that is where a lot of students, a lot of pre-registration pharmacies have complained that they struggle the most. And most people who don't pass the GPSC exam fail because of calculations. Only a small number of people fail because of clinicals. It's easier to pass clinicals than calculations. Both of them are important, don't get me wrong. Both of them are important, but it's easier to pass clinicals than calculations, which is why we have to put a lot of effort into our calculations. So how would you rate these questions today, guys? Give me your answer. Did you think it was easy? Did you think it's moderate difficulty? Do you think it's hard or do you think the questions are just legendary? Yeah, give us, give us how you feel about these questions. Did you think it was easy? Tell us if you think it was easy, you think it was hard, you think it's moderate, or do you think you've never seen questions like this before? And you're basically just angry at me for giving you these sort of questions tonight. Tell me how you feel. Tell me how you feel. Okay, I can see uh, comments from Baby Ryan, moderate. Subanchinta so says moderate. Thija says hard. Elvina went for moderate. Alia says moderate or hard, so you're in the, on defense. Joe says moderate, 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 moderate. Yes, yes. So in my opinion, these ones are moderate difficulty. These ones are moderate difficulty. And this is important, guys. This is important to let you know where you are. The reason I'm doing this lets you know where you are. If, because the last one we did last week, I thought was easy. And this one I think is moderate. And this is my assessment of what you see in the exam. I think this is moderate in comparison of what you see in the actual exam. So you need to basically try to catch up with everyone else. So everyone else is saying moderate, 
you need to feel like that. You shouldn't, you don't have to lie or make up your answer, but you need to feel like that. And if your skills are not quite up to par, you're making some, some, some mistakes, you need to reach out. Reach out to me, send me an email, send me a message. If you've got my number, I can give you advice on how you can improve. If you're on the course, certainly we're going to be going hard from from Sunday, literally going hard from Sunday with our workbooks, our webinars, our assignments, our homeworks, our tests. We have two tests, two mid revision tests and another mock exam again, tough, challenging questions. So um, I'm going to end the session here, guys. Remember for people who want to join us, you still have tonight to join. I moved the... Um, date forward to allow more people to join some people have joined since i pushed the date forward so if you're thinking of joining please do so tonight send me a message if you have any questions or any queries at all about the, the session tonight or about the course that's upcoming from sunday send me a message on instagram whatsapp if you have my number my emails emails on the screen right now or you can go on our website i would like to thank everyone for joining I want to wish you all the best with your revision and I hope you smash calculations in November. The exam is not going to be a walk in the park, but if you prepare properly, you're literally going to smash the exam into pieces, I can guarantee you. So I'd like to thank everybody and end the session on this note. And uh, like I said, if you want to get in touch, you can message me on any of these details on the screen right now and I'll be able to uh, respond and answer any questions you have. Good night, guys. Till next time.